All right, these uh, patting planes, uh, I think we'd probably call them a box type padding plane. This is a standard padding plane. Uh, the way I did the wings was basically, you know, I built that frame, popped on the wing, the plug, and just laid it up. So basically the uh, wing plug comes out, I mean the wing mold, I should say, comes out with flat sides. This is gonna have a, a box type look. And this is how I do it. So the reason I made this is to square and ease making the uh, these guys go in. So let's just uh, quickly do this. Put some hot glue down the front. You've got to be quick because the glue behind will dry on me. Or harden, I should say. So I'm just line it up there. Whip it in and boom. Just hold it there and whip some nice bead of glue. A few blobs here and there. Just help it be secure. And uh, Bob's your uncle. There we go. Load up the gun with some more glue. So, anyhow. I'm just going to uh, continue that around. I uh, don't want to film the glue drying because I'm sure you'll be uh, bored with that. But you'll see the uh, results in a few minutes. Now that I've got the boxes made, I'm going to just send around the uh, periphery of it. Get it all nice and smooth, which will allow me to cut away the uh, mold and make it nice and square at a later date. Uh, I decided even though I've got the uh, padding planes made as a box mold, I've decided just to go with a conventional uh, flat mold. Uh, just don't need to really do it on this and it makes it less flexible, so harder to get the part out. And now that I've got the uh, thing made up, I think I'm gonna have problems getting the, uh, the parts out. So I want it to be flexible, so we'll just have a change of plan. All right, we've got the... Uh... The uh, parting planes all cleaned up, <clears throat> sanded down, we've fitted everything. So I'm just going to put a heavy coat of wax on them. Uh, this will help uh, later on when we try to release them. I'll also uh, double uh, wax the control surfaces themselves, the plugs, and this should assure me a nice release. I've already pre-waxed them before uh, the, this movie was made, but they need a couple more coats. So like before with all the other parts, uh, I'm taping up the plug so that I can uh, apply hot glue to it and help it stick into the parting planes. So I'm not going to uh, show this because we've done it a million times before. So let's get cracking and uh, figure out the center line so we can put these babies into the molds. It's just find the center, which you may be able to see. I've got a hinge point there, which I design into it and you want to just put a mark because this is what we're going to do to uh, align in the top of the mold so that's what we do we mark it and we flip our mold upside down in this case uh, i want better adhesion i don't find this stuff is that good as far as adhesion I'll blow any dust off which might be in there. What I'm going to do is just put a line of tape down the uh, edge here, right at the edge. And this will give me better adhesion to the hot glue. Because I find this uh, hardy backer is kind of powdery, I'd say. It's not got the greatest glue strength as far as the hot glue is, isn't it? So I put this tape there. I'll just glue to the tape and it makes a stronger joint. Make sure it's pressed in. All right. Now what we want to do, take one of these little buggers. Make sure the glue's pressed down. Make sure there's none coming over because that'll 
interfere with your claying. And we're going to get that in now. So, what I do is slide it in. It's got a little bit of friction going on. Except there. Damn it. I want to push it to there. I'm going to just tack it with a little tape, actually. Now, the back edge, the trailing edge of the control server is very thin. So it's hard to get the alignment. But the reason I put those marks on, I don't know whether you can see it, I'm lining those marks up with the top of the parting plane. And this, there's a bit of spring in this wood, so I'm just going to put this piece of tape here for a second. All right, so I don't know whether you see it, but they, they line up with the top of the padding plane. And that's what you want. Now, the problem with this, whoops, with these control surfaces, is there's a lot of washout in this wing. And the ailerons, which is what I'm working on right now, has uh, some washout in it. So it's very hard to capture this. So I'm just going to do this vertically. Put a line of glue. Try and capture the position. I know you can't see it, but that's showbiz. Keep it up for a minute. Keeping it lined up where it dries. Ouch, that hurt. I want to push this one in a bit. And this one slightly out. Because I want to be able to get my clay on. That glue is hot. <laughs> I'm going to recheck those positions in a minute once the back end is. Uh, this one's just slightly looser than the other one. So I'm just going to try and position it so it doesn't move on me. I think you can see the line right there and here. So I don't want to glue it down like that because gravity will suck the uh, the glue right down and where we want to put our clay but I do need to put a little bit more reinforcement of tape at these three hinge positions because that's where I'm going to put the majority of the glue so I'll double check before I do it so what I'm going to do now is just run some strings of glue across for now, just to grab the position. Put it on rather heavy. And we'll let that glue up. So I'm putting it down again. I don't want it running through the gap here. Now I'll just repeat the same process uh, that we did with the uh, aileron. So we're now going to do the flap and uh, get that glued in and then we can clay up the mold and make it up. Okay, the uh, plugs have uh, been uh, put into the parting planes. I've laid up the first half of the mold, as you can see. Here I'm now, uh, I've waxed up. Uh, this side of the mold, I've uh, removed all the clay, cleaned everything up, applied the PVA, and now I'm just applying the uh, homemade tool coat. And uh, then we're going to uh, split the mold and then we'll uh, start laying up the parts. So I'm just going to blast through this because you've seen it in previous videos. If you've not watched those videos, I recommend you do. 
A big reason why uh, my videos are being edited shorter and I'm jumping around is because uh, based on the analytics that I've been reviewing is people are only watching my uh, movies for like maybe two minutes on average and I'm uh, not getting much of in the subscribers and the comments have increased which is great it gives me some useful feedback but you know it's like people either don't like my movies or there's like 50 of you do <laughs> so uh, it takes a lot of time to do this it's very difficult when you're trying to make uh, molds and planes and stuff and film at the same time and if nobody's really interested and it's kind of like my attitude now is why bother putting a great load of effort into it and uh, just provide you with the minimum and hope that uh, things improve if not well hey i don't know about the future but we'll see one thing i've uh, come up with over the years is to try and minimize uh, voids uh, which you can easily get no matter how much you try not to uh, I now run this super hot uh, uh, heat gun that I found uh, this this really puts out some heat and it helps uh, bring any uh, hidden bubbles to the surface and uh, I've been re you know I've noticed over the time that the voids have been reduced to basically uh, zero or one or two tiny ones so it's a it's a really good method you can also use a small blowtorch for as long as you don't get too close of course all right got my handy dandy tools up a little hammer i've uh sanded around just rounded off the corners i have not sanded the face of the molds yet so there could be some blood so uh hopefully not it's been uh, 48 hours now for these molds to cure. Separating good. And here's the moment of truth. Is it going to go up? Like, whoop, there we go. Well, that came out easy. Uh, let's see. All the detail on this looks good so far. No voids that I can see. Normally, I've been having problems with getting some voids on these voids on these uh, edges, and uh, that's not a good thing, obviously. So what I'm going to do is just flex the mold now, and this helps to release the part. It looks like it's come out pretty good so far. So let's see what this guy does it's always a good sign when you can just flex a little bit and they pop out what i've been worried about is basically where all these uh hinge recesses are um they're a little hard to do so hopefully oh yeah the part comes out absolutely no damage to the plug that i can see which is a great news yeah, there's a lot of uh, PVA in there. I don't know whether you can see. But uh, once they're cleaned up, they should be uh, moldable. Theoretically, I could uh, clean up these molds, wax them a couple of times, and uh, lay up the parts today. Don't know whether I'll do that. I might do. I just don't know. See how uh, energetic I am. All right, here's the next one. So, no void, not a damn void in the thing that I can see, but that could change once we clean her up. So, uh, we'll go back and clean them up. Moving along, I've now uh, waxed uh, the molds, I've applied PVA, uh, I've also primed them with just some basic grey auto primer out of a can and uh, now i'm just uh cleaning them up getting things prepped to put the hinge blocks in uh, the layout was three quarter ounce around the details two ounce across the whole panel followed by six ounce cloth then some carbon fiber strips diagonally on the uh, bottom side where the uh, control arms are 
and a little strip longitudinally across the top just to stiffen it up. Keep some nice light yet very strong. Time to split these molds. I've done one, it came out okay, so I thought I'd do this one on camera. There we go. Oh. Okay. So what I like to do first is just go around here and loosen this flush enough. Removing the flashing makes it so much easier just to remove the part. It just basically pops up. Well, good news. The uh, parts came uh, out real easy. Um, when you got lots of flashing like that, generally means you've got very, very good welded seams and that you've got very good coverage of the uh, splooge that I use to uh, glue the halves together. So I'm very pleased and what I'm doing now is just using a knife uh, or uh, some kind of tool, in this case I believe it's a scraper, and I just run down it, the flashing just basically falls away, you don't damage the part. Um, then I just basically uh, use a bit of 220 or maybe 300 depending on what my finish is going to be and I uh, sand the small seam uh, off which is left and generally you don't need to use any filler when you're painting it. Uh, once in a while you do, sometimes you have a little, you know, little dot open or something like that. But anyhow, it uh, came out great. I'm extremely pleased with the quality of these. The detail is just perfect.